It's often said that the Bible is a book of fables, myths, lies, and legends. This is repeated so often in our culture that many people take it on faith that the Bible is no different than any other religious text or ancient mythology. What many people don't realize is that the Bible makes numerous claims that even secular scholars consider to be reliable. These include at least five events that happened in the first century. First of all, we've got Jesus' death by crucifixion. No objective historian or religious scholar denies that Jesus died on a Roman cross. From New Testament writings to statements made by early Christians, virtually everyone agrees that Jesus suffered crucifixion under the governorship of Pontius Pilate. Those who don't are generally seen as fringe outliers who are hopelessly biased and who rarely have any academic credentials to speak of. Of all the events that happened during the lifetime of Jesus, this is seen as one of the most historically certain. It was just too important to the early Christians, and there's no good reason why anyone would have invented this kind of story. Secondly, the disciples believed in the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples were people just like us. And like us, sometimes they were given to moments of doubt. But something happened to the disciples to galvanize their faith. The Gospels record that the disciples found an empty tomb, which would certainly explain why they would become so committed. Scholars who are agnostics or atheists would deny that Jesus actually resurrected, of course, but they would still argue that the disciples believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. This event becomes a cornerstone in the preaching of the apostles. Peter's speeches and acts always include references to the resurrection, and Paul's speeches usually include it as well. Paul also spent quite a bit of time on the subject when he was writing to the Corinthians. Third, the disciples were willing to die for their faith. The disciples had ironclad conviction, and they were willing to die for what they believed to be true. Some critics have tried to dismiss their conviction as some kind of conspiracy. The disciples, too invested to give up on their messianic hero, decided to invent the story of the resurrection and pass it off as the truth. Now, this fails for a number of reasons. Chuck Colson actually gave one of the better responses to this idea. He compared the conspiracy theory of Jesus' resurrection to the Watergate scandal. Now, Colson served as special counsel to President Richard Nixon and was involved in the attempt to cover up the theft of sensitive documents related to the Vietnam War. Speaking of the Watergate conspirators and their efforts to conceal their crimes, he said, here were the 10 most powerful men in the United States. With all that power, and we couldn't contain a lie for two weeks. Take it from one who was involved in conspiracy, who saw the frailty of man firsthand. There is no way the 11 apostles, who were with Jesus at the time of the resurrection, could ever have gone around for 40 years proclaiming Jesus' resurrection unless it were true. The conspiracy theory of the resurrection simply isn't believable, especially because the apostles were put under enormous pressure for their beliefs and most of them were executed for them. Some people will die for what they have been indoctrinated to believe is the truth. Religious extremists do that all the time. But it is impossible to believe that this many people would allow themselves to be murdered for something they knew to be false. Now, fourth, Paul was an unexpected follower of Jesus. Paul's conversion is arguably the most puzzling of anyone in the New Testament. Why would a faithful Pharisee, a rising star among the religious elite of his day, suddenly renounce his beliefs and actively campaign against his former colleagues when they had more money, more power, and more influence? And why give up a prestigious career for a faith that was little more than a lightning rod for persecution? Paul was a man of two worlds, one Jewish, one Roman, and he knew that neither one was going to accept Christianity. His fellow Jews would have considered it a blasphemous perversion. The Romans would view it as a dangerous and subversive superstition. Paul had no worldly incentive to become a Christian, and yet he did. Fifth, the tomb was discovered empty. Even many historians who are agnostics and atheists will accept the claim that the tomb was found empty. Because of their disposition against the supernatural, they deny any kind of divine involvement. 
but they are willing to admit that the disciples somehow discovered an empty grave. Now, how it came to be vacated, in their opinion, is anyone's guess. But why would non-believers accept an empty tomb? And the answer is fairly simple. First of all, we've already mentioned the fact that it makes no sense for the disciples to cover up the disappearance of Jesus' body. Being the first Christians, they could expect discrimination from just about everyone. And tradition has it that almost all of them would be killed for their faith. So why suffer and die needlessly for something that isn't true? Secondly, if the body of Jesus hadn't been taken, all the religious authorities had to do was open up the tomb and produce the body. The disciples would have been exposed as liars, and the Christian movement would have been squashed at the very beginning. Although scholars may offer differing opinions as to how the tomb could have been emptied, they all agree that the disciples genuinely believed that the tomb was in fact empty. The Bible is a book of history, not fiction. It tells a single cohesive story of Christ's life that is not only plausible but historically reliable. It has supporting facts and evidence that ground it in reality. And we're always going to have those who try to claim that the Bible is myth or fantasy, but you're not going to hear that kind of language from most scholars. Professional historians, classicists, and religious experts understand what makes good history and that the Bible often passes with flying colors.